Welcome to another episode of the Mind and Muscle Show with your host, Adrian Moreno. Hope you're having yourself an absolutely wonderful, wonderful day. It's a beautiful Friday evening for me, whatever day it is for you. I hope it is precious and I hope you're looking around at all the magic that is there. I do want to say I am sorry for my absence over the last four weeks. I actually got some big freaking news, guys. Um... So my company just got much larger and it's not my company anymore. I have merged my company with two other wonderful partners to build out the Academy of Human Potential. And we are working on some big things, guys. But nevertheless, I have had endless amounts of meetings over the last four weeks, getting a lot of legal shit done. And um, really, there's a lot that goes in to turning two businesses into one. (laughs) There's like a lot that goes into that way, way more than I expected. And so I had to make a conscious decision. It was a little painful, but I was like, I'm just going to have to put the podcast recording on hold. I'm not going to stop this podcast. This podcast means so much to me. And I know it means so much to a lot of you guys who genuinely get a benefit from listening to this podcast. And based off of that, I just decided, hey, for the moment, I mean, for the current moment, I just have to do this. So I hope you guys can understand. I am sorry. All right. I promise that will not happen again. But thank you guys so very much for sticking around and still listening. I promise I'm going to make it up with you with this amazing freaking interview I have to bring to you. Oh, my God. Do I have a treat for you today guys i just had one of the most mind-boggling truly one of the most mind-blowing interviews i've ever had with this amazing woman jill sessa she is i hope i'm saying her name her last name right but she is absolutely amazing and the fact that i just like me and her connected a while back you're gonna hear the story in the interview but trust me when i say if you're a conscious driven impact driven entrepreneur This freaking episode is the episode for you. Oh my God, is this the episode for you? I just want you to know, when I say this, it's an absolutely amazingly profound conversation. I mean that in every freaking way. This woman is a powerhouse, and I'm so glad that I get to call her my friend and um, you know, just collaborate with this amazing woman and see how we can bring more value to you guys. But aside from that, let's go ahead and um, we're going to get right into it. So Jill Sessa, guys, she is an undaunted solo traveler and locationed independent techie. You, She's actually been nomadic for the past 10 years. You'll find her if you can even catch her, exploring land and water while she manages her website support service, Ultimate WP Help. And she teaches others how they, too, can live the life of which they dream through leveraging the power of outsourcing and automation. Oh, this woman is an automation queen. She's a serial entrepreneur with prior businesses in health and fitness, Pilates studios, and building web applications. And she has been enjoying ever cha- her ever-changing view from her office window for over 10 years while working only 15 hours a week. Guys, 15 hours a week and a tremendously successful com- company. Jill's favorite thing to say to her fabulous clients is, Let us focus on our genius so you can focus on yours. And that, my friends, is exactly what today is all about. Having the courage, having the courage to live purely in your zone of genius. That is what today is all about. So if you're ready to build a business by design, living in your zone of genius, doing it your way rather than the way that they all say is the right way, then I'll kick back, get a nice pen and paper, and get ready to be blown away. What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having yourself an absolutely wonderfully beautiful day. I'm having a good day, guys. Uh, And today is going to get... Oh, you're live. What's...
There we go. And today it didn't get way better based off of this single conversation that I, that we're about to have together with Jill. This is not no pre-planned conversation or anything like that. I'm very genuinely interested in getting to know this woman way more and really seeing how she brings her value to the world. And we'll, real quick, real, real quick backstory before I dive in and start like, you know, oh, it looks like she froze for a second. Jill, can you still hear me? I can hear. I'll be able to talk to you. It's separate. So go ahead. Okay. Got you. All right. No worries. So real quick, I, I, I'm not going to like do a whole introduction to her because I don't want to just ruin it. I'm going to let her share her story, introduce herself, what she does. But I do want to um, let y'all guys know how me and her met. So I invested in a coaching program with the company I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with, with Traffic and Funnels. And I enrolled into one of their high-end programs. And we met on office day, I believe so. We had That is true. Yeah, so we had an office day. It was like in November of 2020. And yeah, I think it was in November. It was and September. It was the very first event back after COVID. Oh, okay. So or mid-COVID, really, now we know, but... Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, exactly. So it was like one of the first times of being in a like in person. And I remember when I had the opportunity to go, I was like, when I'm around other highly successful entrepreneurs, something happens to me. Like I just carry something on. And so I decided to go ahead and go. And I remember Jill sitting right behind me. And I remember she said one thing. I forgot what it was, but I remember I turned around and I looked at you and I just like your hair, like the blue in your hair. I was like, oh my God, I got to know, I got to get to know this woman. And we were able to connect after that. And we just, it brought us to this point. And guys, y'all guys are really going to get to know Jill at the same exact time I'm getting to know Jill. Me and Jill, we aren't the best of friends, but it's a solid connection that I felt like can really be valuable, not just for me, not just for Jill, but for every single one of you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's just get right to it. So Jill, give us the quick, I don't know, like five, three to five minute backstory on who you are, what you do, and how you ended up falling into the position that you fell into. For sure. So first thing that I'm going to say is that I am a full-time nomad and I am currently on the edge of the world at Badlands National Park. And so that is why my uh, internet is causing the video to go in and out. So I'm actually talking to you guys through my phone. You might occasionally see my photo pop up on the uh, Zoom when it connects, but right now it's currently disconnected. So I have been living as a nomad for 10 years. Adrian, how long have you been alive? Just over 10 years. <laughs> Just over 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, real quick, because there may be some people who don't know what it, I know what a nomad is, but some people don't. What is a nomad? Sure. So can you guys see my video now? Yes. Okay. So this is part of being a nomad. This is a view, and it's funny because I'm actually wearing the same necklace, but this was my view 13 days ago in Soho. Um, I belong to a travel club that gives me access to thousands of very, very amazing properties in the world. Oh. And it was new moon. So I travel with that entire collection. That's just my flight travel collection of crystals, jewelry, supportive like items in my life. And they were laid out on the balcony of my hotel room for new moon because this is a really important new moon. So that's not where I am right now. Where are you right now? <laughs> so this is what it actually looks like behind me right now. Wow. I live in a van and it's like, it just is. That's my, literally my kitchen is right behind my office, but I'm going to blur that out because it's super distracting. And I travel like literally full time. 
So sometimes I'm living in my van. Sometimes I'm living in hotels, Airbnbs. I travel by motorcycle sometimes. So I'm with a hammock and tent. I am basically location independent. I have no set property home anymore. And I made that decision 10 years ago. And I really feel like that was a part of my journey where I had spent about four years shifting from what I had done for 20 years. Mm. And I just decided I was going to live with a different kind of determination. And I wiped the slate clean on my life. I mean, I gave up New York City apartment. At the time, I had three cars, a Vespa, a big house in Buffalo, and a New York City apartment. They're all gone. Wow. Okay. What inspired you to do that? So I literally, um, I took a job because, and I, I don't have to go too much into this story, but I had had a Pilates studio and fitness businesses from 13 right up until my, like through my thirties. Wow. And I got really sick and I ended up in the hospital. And during the time that I was in the hospital, I had three different people contact me asking me to head up their fundraisers. And it was this moment for me where I'm like, okay, so I am known as this amazing volunteer in fundraising because that's what I did outside of my fitness business. What would it look like to take a position where I actually did fundraising and didn't have to worry about this illness that was preventing me from running my fitness business? So I went and actually took a job fundraising, and that's why I ended up partly in New York City and partly in Buffalo. I loved the travel. I loved working with, like, these incredible beings that had grown resources in their lives that they were then able to start making gifts. So that's what I did was raise large, major gifts from individual donors who were giving back to the university that I went to and then went to work for. Hmm. then I saw the bureaucracy that happens when you start to work for a really huge place. And um, I like, I had never actually worked for somebody else except like a gym owner in my entire life. Oh, wow. So I, I, you know, I'm the definition of unemployable. Just ask those people at that foundation. I love that. Unemployable. I love that. It's a good I name. am definitely unemployable. So I, uh, chronically unemployable, I guess, you know. So I, I then worked out a deal because, you know, I was really good at my work too. So I worked out that I got to keep the New York City apartment for a while and I was living there, but didn't have my fitness business anymore and just started, what do I want to do? And what an amazing gift I gave myself. I was in my late thirties and it was like literally an empty, like a tabla rasa, they say clean slate. And I realized that the part of my brain that made me really great as a Pilates instructor, somebody who could structure a body, understand how all the connections were made in a body to keep it whole and healthy was actually the same part of my brain that could look at technology or a website or, you know, anything and also construct it. And so I said, I'm going to learn how to make websites. Six weeks later, I learned nothing in the learn how to make websites course. (laughs) But the, the punchline here is I run a website building company. So obviously something clicked along the line and Over the next couple of years, I built some software applications, uh, took care of websites, did website maintenance. Business was a lot of different things. But then um, nine years, so at that point I started traveling. And then nine years ago on my 40th birthday, so there you go, Adrian. You were, you were. (laughs) I'm a little baby. Oh my Lord. on my 40th birthday, I decided to have like this big birthday party and friends were flying in because most of my friends lived in Buffalo, but also all over because I was traveling. And um, this uninvited party guest came. Her name was Sandy. And she came in the form of a hurricane on my 40th birthday. 
Huh. This was on like on the actual day of your birthday. Literally on the date of my birthday is when Hurricane Sandy swept its way through New York City. And so a party didn't happen, but um, we partied in our building because, you know, what happens if the electricity goes out and you lose your like food, right? Your fridge. So everybody decided to get together and have like a, a freezer emptying party. And we um, had a lot of what is in those freezers, which was vodka. <laughs> so it did turn into kind of a crazy party um and it was awesome and we were at my friend's unit which was a um top floor glass balcony overlooking the east river from brooklyn into manhattan exquisite uh-huh. apartment so we literally witnessed what we thought were fireworks for my birthday because we were that drunk and instead, what we were actually watching was the transformer blow that took out Lower Manhattan. Wow. We weren't affected. We never lost lights, power, nothing. And we literally watched like half of Manhattan get taken out. The next day, and this is kind of where my shifts that had been happening in my life came together in like one conversation. One of the guys that I was, like, hanging out with that day, just knew him because he was in my building, Mm -hmm. ordered takeout every hour on the hour just to see if it would get delivered. We were in the middle of a hurricane. And in that, it was like, it was like this to me that in one moment, I was like, I don't want to be around the type of people that will risk somebody else's life for a gag. Because what they were basically saying in that moment, in those actions, was I have so much privilege and somebody else will try to come here just to get a couple of bucks. Huh. There is, we didn't need food delivered every hour, right? Yeah. It was just this real moment for me that it was like, I don't want to be a part of this. I had spent a lot of time around people who were climbers. You know, they were doing everything in order to, I don't mean physical climbers, I mean social climbers. And they were doing everything to get somewhere, but at the expense of other people. And I realized I had grown a life of a lot of prosperity without ever stepping on somebody else. And that's what I wanted to be able to continue. I also realized I was growing a life that didn't require me to be in a building. It didn't require me to be in one place. And so I was like, what would it look like if this was different? And somebody offered me their um, condo in Myrtle Beach, like for a while. Hmm. And so that spring, I said, um, now, sure, you can drive there, you can do this. But instead, I wanted to bike there. (laughs) <laughs> from New York. <laughs> so I found out that you can put your bicycle on the Amtrak, yeah. right? Like, so you can take Amtrak, except you can only take it off in certain spots. You can put it on, but then they're like, no, 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 no. You can't take it off here, here, and here. So my test run was like, just, okay, I'll take it off at the closest place. And it ends up that that was like, I think 94 miles away from where I was going. And I'm like, perfect. So I'll have like this, you know, nearly hundred mile bike ride. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) I hadn't ridden a bike in a while. I mean, besides for like a couple miles around New York. Yeah. And so I literally went on the train and uh, I had packed my bags and I had saddle bag, you know, like I, 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 you know, looked a little janky. I had my little dog in a basket up front and I'm like, let's do this. I pull the bike off. I do the ride again. I'm, I'm fit, but at this point I hadn't done fitness in a while and I had suffered a really serious illness. So it wasn't in like marathon shape. Yeah. And then there's this like 40 mile section where there's no cell phone signal and I'm just hoping this is the right road. And then by mid afternoon, I come out of it and it was like two thirty, and I'm like, oh, okay, I signal now. And then, you know, how what happens? Like, ding, 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 
people, leave me alone. I'm on this bike ride. And then I stopped at a um, hot peanuts stand. I'm from New York. Okay. This whole like hot boiled peanuts. Say. I'm from New York. All right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> hot boiled peanuts. I'm like, okay. And while I'm there, I'm like looking at my phone and I realized that they were from one of our clients because at this point I had some um, big clients, big social media work and different websites and stuff that we were doing. Well, that date was August, uh, excuse me, April 13th, 2013. And for people that know that date or are from the, that area, that was the date of the Boston Marathon. And that was the date of the Boston Marathon bombing. And our biggest client at the time was um, one of the major sponsors. Wow. So my two weeks there looked a little different than I thought they would. I was about to say, like, that's crazy. Like, on a specific day, such big things happened for you. Mm-hmm. And so I did, I ended up, I finished, I got to the condo, I started, you know, and basically, is everybody okay? Is everybody safe? And what I loved about this company is what they said to me is, We need to do something big that nobody needs to know about. What a difference between the guy that was like, I'm going to show off how prosperous I am. I don't think that's actually prosperity. I think that that's a whole different thing that that mindset that guy had. I'm going to show off how privileged I am to this company who said, this is what we want to do. Can you help us make it happen? And nobody is going to know that we're the ones behind it. So even though we were all on like, you know, right? People died, people got injured, massive, massive event. You're following, trying to figure out where these guys are. I mean, I've, you, know, I, you probably are too young to have spent any time around, you know, but there was a lot of like eyes glued to that. I remember Anderson Cooper being on CNN on a loop in my condo and worked a ton. There was no 15 hour work week then that was 15 hour days to get this project in place. And it's something I'm still very proud of to this day, but notice I still don't mention it because they still don't mention it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. It's, it's a huge thing. It's made a huge impact in people's lives that came out of that event. And it was like this real turning point to me that I could work anywhere I had literally like packed a laptop into a bike bag, got on a train, rode the bike and landed in somebody's condo. I had nothing. Yet I still did something pretty monumental. I had amazing views. It was waterfront in Myrtle Beach. Yeah. And I was doing something that mattered, right? Like I was helping a mission propel forward because I had technical skills. And I've not looked back since. I got back to New York City um, after a whole nother adventure. You'll have to wait for the book on that one. (laughs) Got back to New York City and I said to my business partner, what happens if I ride a, um, I think I'm going to ride my Vespa this summer. And he said, you ride your Vespa every day. I don't understand. And I said, no, I think I'm just going to like take off. And so that July 4th, I literally, or July 1st, I, I packed up the Vespa and rode cross country I uh, negotiated buying a friend's van, like, you know, like, and then um, ended up, I got evicted from my apartment and I've never been so happy to get an eviction notice. And it all just like, it all worked out. Right. Yeah, and so I, important you on the way there. it's like, I decided yes to everything, you know, every path that I was just like, this is, this is it. And I really think that, these kinds of decisions take a courage uh, that's that I'm going to be my own version of normal because so many times we're told they say it needs to be this way. Who the heck is they and who is the, and what is this? Like we make these notions in our head and I have not, it's not like I was ever like corporate buttoned up or anything. You know, I didn't make that big of a shift. Okay. But I certainly made the shift from the big house, you know, the, the cars, the life, the friend circle, all of that kind of stuff into just saying, is that really number one, what makes me happy? But then 
the greater level to me was, does this make me content? So rather than seeking happiness, I now use the barometer of contentment because I think they're two different things. Elaborate. Happiness is a point. Happiness, right? Like it's not necessarily sustainable. Yeah, I agree there. Okay. And I think, and I have had a history of depression and, and dealt with like significant mental health issues and making this shift was a big support for me because you're always going for this like bar that you're always trying to jump up to when you're seeking happiness all the time. But when you seek contentment, sometimes even sitting with your depression and understanding it's just part of your journey, you can still be content. Sometimes sitting with a difficult decision and knowing you have the capability to decide is still contentment. That's not happiness. Hmm. Contentment to me comes from having courage to live in that life that you feel you are determined that you feel is your, you know, your mission, that you feel that you are acting deeply with your values all the time, you can be content. You can't be happy 100% of the time. It's impossible. Wow. I've never, I, mean, I feel like I've, I don't know. I've just never that a good one? Like that. that was so powerful. And I see the thing here, is personally with me, you know, like something I personally working through is when I got into the whole entrepreneur space, I was already somewhat like spiritually aware. And I was like, I understood, you know, my beliefs are really going to create what I directly experience. And for some reason, the moment I hired my first mentor, I immediately just let everything I had go. Cause I just said, cause I, I came in, he goes, yeah, from in seven months, I made uh, over $3 million doing this exact strategy. This is the way to do it. You got to DM a hundred people every single day. You got to do this every, and I knew I was falling in a trap. Like I just knew it. And I, and I still said, Adrian, I know what you're about to do. And I remember the decision I was sitting outside. It was like 1130 at night. And I was still working really late. And I started my work day at like 6 a.m. that day. And I remember I was just working and I stopped. And I said, I, Adrian, are you really about to go into this way of like being? And like, I remember sitting there and I said, yeah, I am. Like, I'm just going to do it because this is what this guy is saying is right. And I mean, I made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Dying. Like I was so empty. Like, it's like I, you, you, I, you know, it's a trite term, but literally, it's at the cost of selling your soul. That's what it felt like. Oh my yeah. god! I didn't. I didn't even see yeah. my grand. I didn't even go to my grandpa's last birthday party before he passed away because I was too busy working. Because uh, because Mark Cuban said, I mean, not Mark Cuban. Uh, he said something similar to eighty-hour weeks, but Elon Musk said. 100 hour, you have to work 100 hour weeks if you want to increase your odds of success. And I knew that was his reality and I made it mine. And I yes. missed out on so many things and I wish I can go back, but I can imagine it's, it's it, I've been working like 30 hour weeks now compared to like my 80 hour weeks, which is a big jump for me. But the amount of courage, it's just so, I feel like so many people are scared to live in their truth. So how, yes. did, how did you, because I, I can imagine fears came up. I can imagine some kind of like, oh, is this the it right? It still does. I'm going to tell you, Tuesday, it's today is Friday. On Tuesday, I had fear that would have filled the van about something. It still comes up. How do you, how do you just, um, <laughs> how do you continue to do what the hell you do? I literally have turned my life over to connecting into internally and by that it allows me to connect to greater purpose to energies 
it's almost, it's like almost indescribable unless you're doing it. But like for me, I got my, you know, so a Tuesday, how did I get myself out of that place? Two things. I made a call to somebody that supports me. Mm -hmm. I made a call and said, I need help. That takes courage. Yes, that does. Okay. Because in this particular case, this is somebody who relies on me for her business. So now I'm letting her know I could potentially screw up her business. I'm not in a good spot, but yet I knew she was the person that was going to kick me into that next thing. Like, just like kind of, sometimes it, it kick is the wrong word. It's a nudge yeah, yeah. that we need to like be redirected. And then I decided I like, I'm holding this because my Nirvana course is like who I talk to when I am alone. So it. this is, okay. So this is like, it might not come across well on the camera, but this is one of the most special crystal beings I've ever witnessed in my life. And in Nirvana quartz in particular helps you connect to your highest purpose. Okay. So for me, I needed to like reset myself. I was letting external forces create that fear and I needed, I'm nomadic. I wanted to get to another place. And so I said, I'm going to take the next hour and start the drive. Over the course of that hour, I spoke constantly for an hour. I am grateful for. Huh. It started out, I'm grateful for this steering wheel. Yeah. I'm grateful for my dog sitting next to me. I'm grateful for this water that I have to drink. It went on for an hour. I did not let myself stop because that is how you get yourself into that highest vibration that will move you forward. It's gratitude. You have to recognize that you're human. And this is what I mean about the happiness thing. When I started instead saying, okay, in this moment, I am content to get myself from point A to point B physically in this destination. But in doing that, I also needed to mentally and emotionally move through what was going on for me. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? We tie into gratitude. How do we do that? We tie into our spiritual guides. I know you and I had a funny uh, Facebook message a couple of months ago when we reconnected because you fell off my radar and I didn't want that to happen because you're like, when we met, I was like, oh, this is a wise soul. This is somebody who I need in my life. And you said, I've been on this spiritual journey. And then you said something about your pendulum. And I burst out laughing when I read it. I should probably scroll back and find the messages. And does everybody understand what a pendulum does for spiritual people? I got it right here. <laughs> Do you have yours on it? Are we, are we going to be doing a uh, competing pendulum here? Let's see. I so I guess I picked mine very intuitively. Oh, I love it. Yeah, this has been such a game changer for me, though. And, so what uh, is, you know, what a pendulum does is affirms your deepest inner knowing. Yes. Yes. You couldn't have said it any better than that. It's not. So... For me, this becomes a touch point, a guide. Am I connecting into my deepest inner knowing? Am I listening to that voice or are these external voices overplaying? So Tuesday, I finished that one hour drive. I was in a completely different space and I just asked my pendulum for confirmation of was I making the right choice? in this thing that I was fearful about. Okay. Hmm. And you just, and just sometimes we just need the confirmation because it takes courage. This isn't picking out your ice cream flavor. This is, am I being who I am intended to be? Because when you are a deeply connected spiritual entrepreneur, that's what you're thinking about all the time, right? It's like, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And that can create some anxiety. Oh, my God. I can't even tell you how, many, how much anxiety I've had. Like, am I really doing the right thing? 
so for me, that fear was manifesting itself as, as like some anxiety and stuff on Tuesday. We've made a huge shift in our business um, in the last year, year and a half. And it means I am letting go of a part of my business that I feel really obligated toward. And I built my reputation on part of it. And I have people that rely on me and all of these things came up and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, it's like, wait a second, (laughs) get your, like, are you doing the right thing with everything else? Think about it, connect to it. So that like within an hour and a half, I was a different human. Was I happy? Not at that moment. I was content though. I was grateful. I knew I was on the right spot. And so these kinds of tools are just an, a way for us to bring to a physical level that really deeply spiritual guided type of work that's already in us. Mm-hmm. We already have it. And if you, if you don't think you have it, you start to find guides. For me, I find crystal beings. I, I collect some magnificent crystals. Um, huh. Is that going to show in my weird? I can okay. See or, yeah. Oracle cards, Sacred Rebel Guidebook. This is such a fantastic one for for I think you know spiritually guided entrepreneurs. What they call it, guidance for living a unique and authentic life. That's my goal. So what? So you- you'll love. No, go ahead. You'll go love ahead. the card I picked right before we got on because I always p- pick a card. Uh-huh. And what was it? Power of attraction. Huh. Can you read it out? I'm going to read part of it. They're pretty long. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. But I'm going to just read a couple of sentences because I think that this is really fun based on the topic that we are talking about. Okay. There is such wonder awaiting you. There are so many beautiful adventures and so much magic yet to be. Can you keep your heart open to what is coming towards you without surrendering your experience of this moment by becoming too future oriented? There is magic in this moment too. How cool is that? Because anxiety comes from anticipation, future anticipation, right? Wow. That is so relevant to where I'm at right now. Like personally in my life, like that card hit so hard. So it did not shock. I'm gonna me. send you. I, I pick this card many times. I'm gonna send you some photos of these pages, but I highly recommend this 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 oracle deck. But I think you'll love this. You are a big soul, and with that often comes big dreams. You might worry that you want too much out of life. This oracle is guiding you to remember that there are stages of creation house cannot be built without the flooring no matter how beautiful the stained glass windows you plan to install the walls need to be up first your big life dreams are a work in progress just like you Hmm. so there's a lot that goes into this this you know these kinds of messages send me some pictures of that of those pages after for sure for sure Wow. And again, for me, like, you know, people are always a little surprised when they find out this person who like, you know, can code websites and do all this stuff also has this like need, this spiritual side, this, you know, this part of me. And I think it's what helps keep me grounded. I think it's what helps keep me trusting myself. Mm -hmm. And that combination has brought such magic into my life. You know, um, I, I, I get people saying all the time, you're living my dream. And I'm like, no, I'm living mine. If it was yours, (laughs) let's make it happen. Right. Every one of us can build that courage to actually live with contentment. We can have the courage to say, they also said that this is how I can live. Because maybe that's who the they is, is our guidance, our spiritual guides, our inner knowing. Uh, I see what she did. I like that. I like that a lot. Because I still struggle, I'm not going to lie, with 100% making decisions based off of what I know to be right. And I'll go against it sometimes, and I'll immediately 
face the consequence of that. Like it happens. Yeah. And every time I'm like, dude, if you just would have freaking went with what you knew felt right. And it's mm-hmm. like, so I think it's like a good, one thing that's been helping me a lot is whenever I want to do something my way. Like, so I just did a master class, right? So the master class mm-hmm. that I just did, there's some people watching that were in there. And that master class, when I, my mentor said, okay, here's the template. Do it just like this. If you, because this is a proven process, it works every single time. I started looking through it and I instantly just said, okay, I'm just gonna do this how I wanna do it. And um, it's cool because we've already had like a good amount of calls booked from me just doing how I wanted to do my own thing. And it was just, it felt really powerful to do that. So whenever, so whenever I was doing that masterclass, I kept hearing, uh, this is not right though. It's not supposed to be like this. It's not supposed to be like this. So one question that's been helping me a lot and maybe it can add some value for you is I just say, oh, who does that belong to? Who's that? Oh, that's, oh, that's Sterling. Okay, that's, okay, that's just him. That's not me though. Yeah, oh, and that's so good. It allows me to kind of like just separate myself. Oh, who does that belong to? I wonder how long this thought has been around. This thought has probably been cycling around for Oh, that years. is so good. I want to share with you some other work I've been doing there. Um, please, there's please. A, the guy that owns the crystal store in Nashville is one of like around that type of work. And he has um, a simple technique called calling your power back or call my power back to me. Mm-hmm. And he talks a lot about giving the power back to the other, like somebody, you know, is trying to take some of your power, like separating that out. They get what's theirs. You get what's yours, you know? And so that recognition of like, is that my belief? Is that my feeling? Is that my experience? Or am I playing out somebody else's story? Mm, yes. It happens a lot, right? Yes. And that's where worry and anxiety come in. Yeah. So, so much of the time. And I can hear my family's voice and all the things I do. My mom, oh my God, Adrian, you're ridiculous. You're crazy investing that amount of money or you're crazy putting all of this on the line. And, and it can really drive me to do something that feels so, just so damn off for me. Like one thing that almost ruined my reputation was sales should be your focus all day. Sales should be your only focus. Sales. From, and from all of the entrepreneurs that I wanted that yeah. kind of success. So I was like, you're right. So what I did was I was making more sales than you can possibly imagine, but my attention on what I really wanted to do, which is really be with my clients and really help them get through things, that disappeared. And when that disappeared, I lost almost everything. I had my reputation getting tore apart. And I was like, that's just not who I am. Why am I mm-hmm. acting like this person? I was that guy on the phone, like buy or die mentality because that's what I was told was right. And oh my, I almost, I climbed an entire mountain. And I remember one day when I realized it was the wrong one was I went to my mom's house. I opened up, a, I opened up one of the drawers at my mom's house and I saw my old phone there. From where I used to live there, it was just buried. And I was like, oh, my old phone. Of course, I'm curious. I want to turn it on, go through the photos and all that. I turned on the phone, I went through my photos, I went through my text messages. And the very first text at the top was my grandma, Gloria, who's passed away now. And so I look at it and I, you know, my finger just hovering over it. I was like, ah, let me just, I just want to read our conversation. And I went through it and I scrolled, you know how it has like the dates of the messages. So I scrolled yeah. about four months up and just scrolling, crying, reading everything. But the one thing that just drove me crazy and like this, it, I was just like, I can't believe this happened, was in four months, there were six instances, six times. She texted me very randomly. Hey, mijo, you want to go, go have lunch? Hey, mijo, you want to go, you want to come watch a movie with me? Hey, mijo, you want to go to the library? Like just things like that. You want to go take me to Payless? Because she's like shopping at Payless. <laughs> I was like, and every time my response is just sorry grandma i'm working Mm -hmm. sorry too busy for you 
I was working for mm-hmm. myself at the time. I could have easily got up and went. I had nobody telling me I had to be there. But every other mentor in my head was telling me I had to be doing these things. And that's the grind. That's when I realized, dude, I just caught. I just climbed an entire mountain that had nothing to do with me. And that is when I really Mm -hmm. snapped and I really started. That's whenever I started putting my spiritual side out in my business, like full force. I was like, okay, this is who the fuck I am. I'm going to put this out there and started doing things. My, of course, I'm still kind of getting through a couple of things that, you know, kind of doing business my way. So let me ask you this. If there was a business, if there was a spiritual on, or uh, yeah, an entrepreneur who they're spiritual, but they're not really expressive of that side in their business. They're just doing, they're just running a business for the sake of accumulating the money or, you know, helping people in a surface level way. And they're, but genuinely, internally they feel extremely off they feel extremely out of alignment what advice or what would you tell them what would you what would you give them to there is literally no better and no simpler practice than moving meditation and by that i mean taking an activity for me it's paddling could be walking but something that you can do on a regular basis that allows you that you don't have to be thinking it. So I don't advise walking in busy city streets when you do this, but literally doing something that connects you in with nature, but gives you time and space for a lot of people sitting down and doing a seated meditation when they're in that kind of difficult spot, it's a little hard to live with ourselves Mm. and that struggle to get into the meditation. We get very judgy. So instead, give yourself some grace. And I think as we move our body, we move through things. Doesn't have to be crazy intensity. You know, I know you're in like a lot of fitness world, but I think just doing something that gets you moving. For me, the rhythm of paddling, put the paddle in the water, push, put the paddle in the water, put the paddle, and then allowing myself to focus on gratitude and then approaching whatever that problem is. Getting that into a practice is huge. And you've got to kind of start there. You've got to start with a practice that connects you into yourself so that you don't have fear about listening to that intuition, that you really hear that voice. You start to understand it. So in other words, completely. I myself for the last year. So I've done that. You know, I've been doing this a long time. You guys now know my age, right? And I'm about to hit the, the half century. Um, I myself put myself through an ayahuasca spiritual journey of the last year. And I think I can say that in this group. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, oh my God. I cannot okay. wait to do it by the way. Uh, we got to talk. So about, I actually, um, I was, I was supposed to actually be at one tonight, but then I had my COVID shot and had, uh, I just oh. had COVID recently and I had COVID shot and got sick again. And so I decided no, but what that enabled me to do was, I don't drink 12 cups of ceremony or anything like that. It, it allowed me to really deeply connect into a space, but also this voice. I have a spot on the top of my head where I hear a voice all the time, but it was like mumbling. Okay. Like there wasn't a lot of clarity. And what was very interesting is that do, doing ayahuasca. And I think that you can do this through coaching with a spiritual healer. Like, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can do this. For me, this was like a really quick way to do it. Mm-hmm. I needed to get either get this voice out of my head or start to hear that voice. And instead I started to hear that voice and it's been a magnificent guide for me. Um, And again, in bringing courage, but also I actually listened to it and I know it's my voice, but it's actually, it's, it's a great, 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 great grandmother's voice. So that means it's somebody pre technology, which is what, you know, such a huge part of my life. Right. So it's like, it's a deeper connected knowing. And then the other, so I, I can go on and on and anybody is feel, can feel free to contact me about what that journey has been like, because I think for somebody that might even be considering that, I'd be happy to talk them through it. Mm-hmm. And by the way, somebody said, me, somebody said half century is amazing. Okay. Just so you know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I do want to start expressing it in terms of century because this is just a funny aside. 
I had a client years ago. It was her, it was her 50th birthday. And she said to me, I said, oh, happy 21st. And she said, no, no, no. I tell people I'm 60. That way they can be like, damn, girl. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I just thought, like, isn't that awesome? Because, like, if you tell people you're younger than you are, they're going to be like, huh? So I'm 48. I'm not quite a century, but I'm so close. I turned 49 uh-huh. shortly. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, um, so I was, uh, what was I saying just before that? Oh, so ayahuasca. Uh-huh. But the, um, the spiritual connectedness, every time you tell somebody that you get an inkling, right? Like the fact that you said to me about your pendulum in a message was because you were like, you mentioned a couple of things, like on a Facebook post or something. And this is where I'm at. And you're like, I'm going to out myself. I'm going to like, let her know that I'm a spiritual entrepreneur too. Okay. It's like so funny. Yeah, we're coming out. Oh my God. Right? Like I'm coming out. So I really think that if we actually just say to our clients or to somebody, hey, this is what I'm going through, or like, oh, I can't meet with you this weekend because I have an ayahuasca ceremony, instead of hiding it, it's like a totally separate and distinct part of yourself that integration you will magnetically pull more and more people that are also on a spiritual path that you can either lead them a little bit or you can follow their leadership a little bit and you can move forward. But if you hide it, what are you going to do? You're going to start following those other shiny objects, the people that are not living a life in alignment with how you want to be, who are not acting in alignment with your values. Because, like, you're, you're only showing that shiny object seeking part of yourself. Show people that connected spiritual part of yourself, and they'll reveal all over the place. Like, it, it blows my mind, some of the people that I've had conversations with, that on the surface, you're like, they're not into any of that stuff. And instead, we're up for 24 hours talking about, you know, the conversation we had with our great, 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 great grandmother spirit. And, you know, like all of this kind of stuff. We're like, oh, yeah, I did this. And, and you start to bring yourself into these circles of people. You start to bring yourself into even spiritual, like uh, energetic circles that then further support your journey. Because that's what we all need on this. And I really, I'm going to, this is my life mission. You've heard of this when I talk about business before. But I think if every single one of us spends most of our time at the intersection of what we're great at and what lights us up, that intersection is the secret to the world. If everybody had the courage to spend their time there and let other people spend their time at their intersection, because it's different for everyone, yeah. all roles would get filled. You will literally magically pull all of your needs into you because you are living at that space. It is so high vibe. It is so high energy that you're going to find. So for me, when I is like when I really narrowed that down, I brought in a Moroccan surf shop owner who thought maybe she wanted to leave the not owner, excuse me, worker who thought maybe she wanted to leave the surf shop and travel again, like do some traveling. And how did she? So maybe she's going to get a virtual job. And she asked me for nine dollars an hour because she was making eight dollars an hour working at the surf shop. Huh. She's now my head of operations. Wow. Let's just say she does not make $9 an hour. I can imagine. She does everything in my business that was a bottleneck for me before because I was trying to do things that were I was not great at and they certainly didn't light me up. So she is a person will actually tell you she loves spreadsheets. We have a client, by the way, her tagline is spreadsheet. We have a client whose tagline is spreadsheets are my love language. And I always say that that's the proof that there is somebody out there that their intersection is so different from yours that they will add to your life. Oh, my God. 
Okay, so now it, that makes me so happy that there are people who love spreadsheets because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Here's the coolest thing. When you bring them into your life, when you employ them, you hire them, you know, you say, I need help with this. You are giving them the chance to live at that intersection. Oh, that's a good way to look at it. You're giving them the gift of being inside their genius, being inside what lights them up, which again, high vibe. I want a world where all of us are pushing for a higher level of vibrational energy, where every one of us is saying, what can I do for the collective that's going to rise? Believe it or not, hiring the rock star bookkeeper who loves doing books is helping with that. It is. It You've is. got a business that, say again? I said it's raising the vibe collectively because now they're collectively. in the and, and therefore yours does, theirs does, you know, so anything that like our, our tagline of our business is focus on your genius, let others focus on theirs. Okay. My business does online, you know, online business support where systems and operations for entrepreneurs with a mission. Okay. That's because many of these entrepreneurs with a mission don't want to see the back end of a website. <laughs> so by letting us, you know, like letting us do that for them, it frees up their time and energy to be who they need to be in the world. Mm. magic happens. It's incredible when people decide to let that stuff go and not be, you know, again, another, it's another tagline of ours, but it's like chief everything officer. You're running a business and thinking you have to run the entire business. Mm. Yes. Okay. Real quick. Do you have like five more minutes? I do. For you? Absolutely. Oh, I love you. Um, I do have to get going soon, but I, there's a question that, that all of this has brought up for me now. Like, I'm, this is like a selfish question for myself, definitely. I feel, and this is like, could be, this is my limited thinking. I know it's like the thinking that's limited, but I feel like I can't only work in my zone of genius when I start my business. Or I feel like I'm, I, I'm not at the level where I can only work in my zone of genius. And I have to wear all of the hats. Is that like, a, is that my rule that I'm making up? Or, well, okay, so what do you say to people? I'm sorry, my neck hurts from the nodding I'm doing right now. People limit that based on finances. They limit it based on, um, I'm in a curse right now. Are you okay with that? Please do. Fuck yeah. They think, okay, this guy, because I can't say this without it. Don't think that you are so fucking special that somebody else can't do 80% of what you do. Okay. Like that's the thing It's like, we think we're the only ones that can do it that way. This is all about me. This is my reputation. This is who I am. I'm the one that they want. When we started giving my head of ops, her name is Frankie to our clients. Mm -hmm. The message is I, I have an entire fi file of, oh my God, thank you for letting me meet with Frankie today. Thank you for letting me. Think about that. Thank you for They that. think it's a gift. They huh. think it's a gift, not a detriment. Huh. So I just need to make up another word. Because word. I cannot, as a human, be 100% of everything every other human needs. Okay. In the business, there are business things. So there are people who focus on business, like I mean, it's like the, the nuts and bolts. There are other people that focus on content, like all of these kinds of things. Sure, there are many successful businesses run by one person. I'm going to tell you that their niche is very narrow, <laughs> yeah. which is also smart. Okay, that's smart. So they're narrow. Okay. Is Elon Musk running a one-man band? He didn't right from the very beginning. Okay. So it depends on what your level of empire is, but I really think that we, we set ourselves up for this limitation. You can start with getting for like literally $200 a week, getting somebody for a couple hours a day that will take care of you. Just, I even have a worksheet about this, like go through your day 
And literally, what are the things that lit you up? Like, I love doing that. I can do this for the rest of the day. Or, oh, my God, I avoided doing this. Or these are all the things I had to do today. I suck at all of these. And it took 20 times longer as it should have. Those are the things of like, get the, find the genius. And you will be so surprised at how much energy you'll free up for yourself. Because that mental struggle of spending a lot of time doing stuff that we stink at and brings our energy down. Like, think of what that's costing you. Damn good point. Okay. So just a, like even just a little bit of support. And then I have this thing where I look at my like staff, whether it's, I have staff all around the world. So some people will call them outsourcers, freelancers, whatever. I just call them people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people who work for me, work with me. Okay. But I have this thing that when we get like an influx of money, I, I look at people as an investment that brings me a massive amount of return. Because I can bring in another person into my business that will support certain tasks that I need. And that will allow me to command higher prices, bring in another package, make another offer, right? It's a phenomenal investment. Instead of thinking of that as an expense. Oh, I love that little frame. Oh, my God. Because when, okay. when I do my business expenses, I count <laughs> payroll. <laughs> They're an investment. So to me, like I, you know, when I, I build my entire business around having a support team. So I don't look at like my hourly rate is what I make. Yeah. I look at the hour as like, oh, okay, then that's going to pay this person that, da, 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 you know, like that kind of a thing for our hourly services, for our package services, same thing. I don't like, I think we like kind of make these numbers in our head and then forget like to plan for support. And then, therefore, we think we're cutting into it. Mm. Instead, think about, like, oh, okay, that money that's coming in, I get to invest it in this person. And then you get wonderful things, like, you know, we have staff around the world that have been able to buy homes for their family, support four or five kids in school, you know, like, all that kind of stuff. That's an investment. What a beautiful, like, butterfly wing effect of having the courage to let go of the stuff that I'm not great at. man, I needed this freaking, I needed it so bad today. And do I have your permission to just add you on to like my life team? Like when I, oh, I yes. support, because I know you're going to be one of those people that I'm just, I'm like, Hey Jill, I need some help right now. Please do. Please do. Yeah. I, it would be my honor. In case you didn't notice, this is what lights me up. I see that and I can feel that more than anything. Okay. This is what lights me up too. It's like just being yeah. connected with people like this and being able to just, ex I'm, I'm a very curious person. I just like exploring that curiosity, you know? Um, but as we close this out, if you had, if you had one final message to give to the world, and I know it's a big question, but you had, let's say, 60 seconds or so, what would you say? I think I've said a lot of it already, you know, in the sense of um, this, having the courage to spend your life at that intersection mm -hmm. is like, let's kind of sum up all of this, but, you know, having your courage to spend your life at that intersection is that investment in yourself and others. When you do that, it's like, it's like this uh, selenite. It's a crystal, but like it's a sword, right? It's an energy clearer. It's like when you decide to do that, it's like you cut out all of that other negativity and you just like literally propel yourself forward. It's just absolutely amazing how that magnetizes you. And huh. oh, I'm not wearing my sweatshirt because it's 101 degrees here, but I, ha I was wearing a sweatshirt this morning because it was only 55. And if, if you look down at it, it says, you are not alone. And it says it upside down. It's from uh, Seek Discomfort, which is the S theory, guys. And when you look down at it, you see it. So uh -huh. I think remembering that, I think remembering that is so important that a lot of entrepreneurs 
that hustle and grind mindset. It's like, oh, I have to do this and I'm going to do it by myself and I can't show any weakness and I can't show that I need this and I need support. Da, da, da. Use, use it. Find your team, you know, your tribe of mentors. Find your support network. Find the people that you'll get on a wine and gab with, you know, and like you're not alone in it. Every time you find yourself getting into that, literally make it that that's your trigger to pick up the phone or send a text or at, tell somebody I need help. Yeah. Right. I think that that's really, really important that we connect into one another because that is the human experience. So right? beautifully said. Beautiful. Okay. So I am so honored that you asked me to be on this call and I hope that we have more conversations, even if it's through oh. messenger and all this. Yeah, uh, it's we, your, we're going we're gonna to have to hop on zoom and just talk because. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the work that you are doing, the work that the people in your group are doing is important. It's important. Thank you me. all are helping to raise that, that energy of the world and stick with it. Have the courage to stick with it. It's important. Uh, thank you so promise. much. A pro pinky promise. Pinky promise. That's a, <laughs> that's a super hardcore promise. <laughs> um, but oh, thank you so much for doing this, Jill. This was a wonderful conversation. And this is one of so many more conversations to come that me and you are just going to have. And I'm looking Forward to it more than you can possibly imagine. So where can people find you and where can people just look and like discover your work and just get acquainted with you? Yeah, so we, you know, we build websites and of course that means we're rebuilding our own right now. So um, you can always go to jillsessa.com, but it's, uh, which is my first and last name. Our business work is at ultimatewphelp.com if somebody wants to connect in with me. Also, I would love to give you a link, Adrian. I open up a chat session. It doesn't have to be about work or business or somebody's business needs. I love doing this with people. I think it's part of my personal life mission. So I'm going to give you a link that people can literally just schedule a call with me. Okay. Oh yes, that'll be awesome. And I'm a, um, okay. you can post it in the group. I'll send that to you um, right after we're done, but you can post it in your group. Literally. And I like, it's a no holds barred conversation. If, you found something in this talk today that you're like, I would love to ask her more about that. I might take you on a walk with me. You know, I might say, Hey, we're going to do that call at the chat and I'm going to be on a walk or a paddle, which is super fun. Um, but I, I think it's important that we support one another. And if I said something or, you know, you're curious about something, please take me up on that. It's not a, it's not a sales call, a pitch, nothing. I literally, it's called chat with Jill. The link is like, chat with Jill. I love that. Okay. So, that is beautiful. <laughs> so please, please, please take me up on it. Okay. Okay. I definitely will take you up on that. Thank you so much for all of that. I, I, I genuinely have so much love for you. I'm so happy we met and likewise. I'm happy, I'm happy I sent you that. For, I, I'm happy I sent you that friend request. I think I was the one who sent it. So I'm really happy I did and I'm happy I saw you that day. So um, yeah. So aside from that, thank you so much for this and I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Adrian. Bye. I mean, guys, what the heck? Wasn't that freaking amazing, right? So look, if you want to be able to get on these interviews live and be able to ask questions and be very engaged with us, then you want to tune in to the most useful Facebook group for true impact-driven entrepreneurs that you're likely missing out on. Let me guess, are you thinking of hiring another life, health, or business coach? If so, then I suggest you take a look at this group. Because did you know that there is a powerful state of consciousness that if used in the right way can make you the most consistent, productive, and effective you've ever been? Sounds woo-woo, but it's actually true. It's been known for about 200 plus years, but no entrepreneurs have ever really thought to use it. And it is the single easiest and fastest way to eliminate destructive patterns that keep showing up in your life. And right now, I'm literally bringing this method to your attention. And if you choose to miss out on this, then the entrepreneurs who don't will be ahead of you. And I don't just mean financially, although that happens too, but in terms of happiness and fulfillment. 
Because it's the fastest way to grow the impact of your business. It's the easiest way to get in the best shape of your life. It's the easiest way to gain clarity and expand your mental bandwidth. And it's the easiest way to create the habits that you want by eliminating destructive ones. And we teach you how to use this powerful method inside of our Facebook group for free. This is the same exact system that me and dozens upon dozens upon dozens of other entrepreneurs have used to gain mental clarity, vibrant energy, motivation, consistency, and a sense of deep purpose, eliminating bad habits, and so much more. So I don't want to keep on talking about it right here, though, because if I did, this, <laughs> then I'm telling you, this podcast will be longer than the pandemic. Plus, if you've been listening this far and if you've gone this far, I think you've proven enough to you and to me that this simple yet effective method is perfect for you. So in the chat, I mean, in the notes below, you will see a link to join our private Facebook community. And also in this community, there is endless trainings for you to unlock next level potential. See you there.